Hello again. All right, now that we know how to hold our pick, we're gonna talk about how to use it. So, we wanna strike our strings. Nice and evenly like that, okay? We can actually strike at different points along the string. I recommend right here at the end of the sound hole, at the bottom of the sound hole. That's kind of my visual reference for how I know I'm in the normal position. And then we have terms for our other positions. When I'm close to the bridge, in classical guitar, they have a term for that. They call that sol ponticello. And when it's here, it's called sol tasto up by the neck. Kind of lighter and prettier here. Normal. See how this is a bit of a louder sound? A little more bright towards that end. So over here and over here have great application. You should definitely play there sometimes, but as a general rule, you really want to stay in the middle for, unless you're going for one of those sort of different timbral sounds that are offered at the other end. That just means that they have a same note with a different sound. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about what timbre means at another point in time. So anyhow, I have my pick here. I like to rest my finger. I'm just going to go through striking at that point in the string here. Okay, you can also go up. That's called alternate picking, and that's a whole study in its own that we'll talk about at a different time. So we're just going to focus on just regular down strokes right now. And there are really two main types. We can do a free stroke, which is actually what I had to do when I was playing on my high E. Okay, and on this high, on this low E, when I do a free stroke, that means that I'm playing and then I'm not playing any other strings. I'm freely skipping through the air after I've hit that string. Now, the opposite of a free stroke is what's called a rest stroke, okay, where I rest on the next string. See how my, my pick landed on A and it's resting there now? Played the E and it stopped on A. That's called a rest stroke. So you see why it's not possible to do a rest stroke on high E. There is no string in that direction to rest on, right? So we can do rest strokes or free strokes. It sort of depends on the musical context and whether or not we have enough time to rest on that note. Um, but if we want a little more volume, this is a way we can get it with a rest stroke. Rather than squeezing our pick tighter, we can kind of rest and put a little more weight of our arm perhaps into it to bring out a little bit more sound. Okay, so we'll talk more about picking and how that relates to counting and our timing and uh, more specific techniques in the future, but that's just a very basic understanding of it, free and rest strokes, okay? Now let's talk about strumming. So strumming is another very important part of playing guitar. I'm just gonna mute all the strings here so we won't have to worry about any chord knowledge that you may or may not know. If you do know some chords, instead of just muting, perhaps you can hold the chords. Some of these might sound a little nicer, but I'm just gonna mute in case you don't know any chords. And that will really ensure that we hear the sound of the pick hitting the strings as well. Kind of fun. I sometimes like to pretend that guitar is a drum and these lower strings are like the bass drum and these higher strings are like the snare drum. Just kind of have fun. So we'll talk about more intricate strumming as we go. Right now I just want to talk about the main technique I'm doing. It's very similar to when I flick water off my hand. If you've ever been in the bathroom and you wash your hands and you go and you, you know, you can't figure out how to do that electronic paper towel dispenser or whatever. It's out and you go, well, I guess I'll just do one of these. That's pretty much the motion we're doing when we're strumming here. Kind of flicking my hand out. So, nice, easy wrist motion, okay? I keep my pick in the same grip here. So I played some chords even though I told you I wouldn't. I wanted to demonstrate how that sounded in a musical context too. But for now, I'd like you to just focus on just all downstrokes. Just like with alternate picking, we'll talk about how strumming up works in a rhythmic sense. It's related to our alternate picking for single notes. So you don't have to worry about coming up quite yet. We'll talk about that later on. For now, just... 
Okay, so I'm using the weight of my arm, but not too much. I don't want to move it too far, right? I'm using my wrist. It's mostly in the wrist. Okay, and that's how you strum. Like I said, it gets a little bit more specific once we get into context and we need to figure out certain rhythms to strum. Timing is everything. So this hand is so important in keeping your groove and your song alive, the feeling of it, the, the timing. And I think timing is the most important part about music personally. So you really want to spend some time and make sure your pick feels nice and easy to hold. You can keep your shoulders relaxed while you do this. You're checking in with your posture and all the things we talked about. And you're just flicking your wrist to use this. And you're not really using your whole uh, arm muscles and stuff so much. Maybe just a little bit to get the weight of the arm, okay? All right. Well, now that you know how to strum, we are on our way of our guitar journey. I'll see you in the next lesson and we'll learn some more.